folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. Today we're going to look at Spring and using Spring for dependency injection. I'm going to run you through a fairly typical example. I'm using IntelliJ for the example today. Uh, that's my preferred IDE, and I'm actually running the latest version uh, at the time of the recording, the IntelliJ 14.1 uh, EAP release from JetBrains. So I'm going to be using that today to demo uh, the Spring stuff. And we are looking at the Spring Boot application that we did in the last module where I did an introduction to Spring Boot. Uh, if you haven't completed that module uh, in the course notes, you'll be able to find a link to the source code where you'll be able to download that from the GitHub repository and follow along here. So uh, I've gone into that application and set up a couple things. So we're going to go through a, a scenario where we have a website. Uh, let's call it an e-commerce website. We obviously want to display products on that website. So I've created a, a domain object product. It's a pretty simple POJO. Uh, uses a just has a string uh, and a, a getter and setter for that. So nothing nothing special there. This is just for demonstration purposes. And I also have a, a product controller. Uh, this would be the web controller to, to serve up the web page. Uh, we're not going to get into Spring MVC at this time. We're just using this to demonstrate as a controller. And then uh, the getting started application uh, from the last last module that we did, I've added to that uh, this section here to get a hold of the application context. So Spring Spring Boot or the Spring Initializer created this section of code here. Uh, I've added the context so we can grab the context and then get the bean. Uh, product controller um, and all, all I'm doing is get by ID of one and then we're gonna uh, print out the result here and I, I'm throwing in the system exit because we configure this as a web application uh, without that the application kind of just sits there and and doesn't do anything without you manually uh, killing the process so uh, we're going to be using this for a demo today and I'm going to step you through. There's a couple of errors here that I want to walk you through so you can see this. So first time you run this, if you've just checked it out, uh, imported the project into IntelliJ, um, you're going to get an error saying Java source release eight. Okay. Um, that is a problem with the, the JVM that you have pointed to. Um, I'm not sure why IntelliJ didn't pick up, uh, the proper JVM, but, uh, after the import, you may or may not have to do this step. Um, come up here, go to the module settings, project structure, I'm sorry, and change the uh, SDK from uh, 1.6 to 1.8. It could just be a default on my system. You may or may not see this step. Okay, so now I'm going to run it again. And this time, see Spring starting up. I'm going to start up Tomcat, run it and now I get an error okay so now it's saying that it cannot find the product controller and I want to step you through we we showed you that we set up the controller annotation so the product controller is properly an annotated but it's saying it can't sit, start it uh, the problem is uh, spring itself with the the boot configuration if we do a control click on it it does this configuration step here or I'm sorry, component scan. It does a component scan step. And that tells uh, Spring to, to look uh, in a package for components. What's happening here, uh, the default behavior of, of Spring is to look within the components. So the getting started application bean is actually a, a Spring configuration bean also. So um, Spring is putting on that at component scan here on the class for you in the background. but the default behavior is to look within its package. Well, I've defined my controller in a different package. So what I need to do is come in here at component scan and tell it the package to check. So you can see that and by doing this, it's going to look for everything in the package guru.spring framework. Now let's try to run this again.
and you, you can see that we got the, the result of the action. So I got a, a print line or a description of spring, uh, spring guru in action. Okay, so my controller, all he's doing is uh, providing a new product uh, and then doing a, a set description of that and return that product being. Um, so this is not a, a very realistic example of a spring application. Um, I'm going to use this as an example. We're going to move this around a little bit to something that you'd see more in a, a typical production environment. Uh, if you remember I was talking earlier, uh, your product controllers, or I'm sorry, product controllers, your controllers should only have one function in life, and that's really to respond to the web call here. So I've seen plenty of database calls done inside of controllers. It's a very bad practice. So what we're going to do is separate this out to make this look like a more uh, typical uh, spring class. So uh, I've set up a couple uh, more directories here. So we're going to come in, come in here, create a new Java class, and call it our Our product repository. Okay, so we're going to annotate this class with that repository and see I'm coming in I want to get by a, a long value so in this I'm going to set up A method we're going to do the same thing this product controller did so I'm cutting and pasting that out of here so now I have a repository Okay, this is a common design pattern. We're not going to get into persisting to the database, but uh, at least in this tutorial. Uh, but here is where you'd put in your database logic and any interactions with the, the database. And a, a good product pr product to use would be Spring Data, uh, pretty ver versatile. That's, this is the area that Spring Data would focus on. Okay, so now we're, we've set up our, our persistence layer. We're getting that completely decoupled from our controller. And we want to create a, a service now. And actually, I'm going to follow a good uh, convention here and make this a, an interface. And IntelliJ is saying that's not in there, so we got to do an import. I'm just going to do Alt Enter, and it'll, it'll mark that import for me. So IntelliJ just injected that for me. Now, so I, I made that an interface. Now I need to create an implementation for it. And it, it's a, a pretty widely accepted Java uh, convention to name your interface with a class name and then implementations of it, uh, that interface name, and then IMPL for the implementation. So I'm following that convention here. And now IntelliJ is complaining about this, uh, not implementing the interface, so an Alt-Enter. I'm going to say implement methods. Okay, so now I have my implementation. Now let's make this a, an actual Spring service. So, oops. Get rid of that. So now I've created this as a service. And this here is where we want to get into uh, doing some of the dependency injection. So 
my service is going to be working with the repository. And I'm going to create a setter. Now this is where I'm going to use an auto-wired annotation. So now I'm telling Spring uh, to auto-wire that, that repository into my service layer. And this becomes a very simple implementation. Uh, realistically, you're going to be doing something a little bit more Uh, you'll have more logic in the service layer. This is just a, an illustration to show how things get wired up in Spring. So now I have my service layer that implements my product service interface. Uh, the component, the, the actual implementation is going to get wired up. So what's important to remember here is you're designing the code. Um, you have, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, the, is how the components are wired up. So now I can add a, a completely different implementation if I needed to. So my service layer and repository are now independent. Now let's come back to the controller. And now my controller, he's going to need to get the product service. And notice I'm using the type of the interface here. I'm using control N to bring, bring up generate, and I just want setter, setter, and so now I have my service being wired in, and my controller implementation becomes turn product service dot get product ID. So just to, to recap here, so I have my product controller that's going to get called with a theoretical web, web service call. It could be a page or whatever. Um, so we're going to execute the get method. The get method is going to go to the product service, which is being auto-wired by Spring, uh, to get the product ID. So we're going to go into the service implementation. The service implementation has a handle on the product repository. The product repository has a simple method here. And if you use uh, command and then you can click, it will drill into the method for you in IntelliJ. So uh, here's the logic that I formerly had in, in the controller. So now you can see how this is a much cleaner implementation. I'm going to give a uh, go back over here and run it. Okay, now you can see that we got the same same results. So this is an example of how Spring will wire up components for you. So uh, Spring started up, I fired up Tomcat. Uh, you can see that Tomcat was running. We got uh, the product controller, the, uh, an instance of that here. Okay, so we're asking the Spring context to give us that bean. So Spring is going to give us a fully configured product controller bean. Okay, so that product controller, when Spring hands it off to us, is going to be auto-wired with the product service. Okay, the product service that gets injected in that beam will be fully configured also. So the product service calls for a product repository. That product repository, um, because I annotated that as a repository, that's a Spring bean now. So everything got wired up, and we can see how, how Spring executed that. That concludes our module on Spring Dependency Injection. Uh, coming up, we're going to do a, a module on JUnit. We're going to test this uh, using JUnit, which is the most popular unit testing framework uh, in use today for the Java development environments. And then uh, we're going to do a, a quick module using Spock as well. Spock is an up-and-coming uh, Groovy-based unit testing uh, framework, and we'll show you how to use that with uh, Spring as well. 
After that, we'll get into uh, Spring MVC and show you how to use Thymeleaf to generate a web page. If you like what you saw, please show us some social media love. Uh, give us a like on YouTube or like our Facebook page. And until next time, this is John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. Thank you.